بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته ويلكم باك تو انذر سيشن توداي وي غنا بي لوكينج ات ذا واجب برايز اند ذا امفاسايز اند نون امفاسايز سنه برايز سو ستارتينغ وذ ذا سيكشن اون ذا وتر برايير از ان ذا بوك باي امام شرمبلولي مراكي السعادات ذا وتر برايير از واجب it consists of three units all prayed in one prayer that ends with one set of salams in the third unit of the prayer before ruku he should do the qanut as it is wajib to do so this is the dua we're going to mention this is performed throughout the year the description of the qanut was already mentioned now the witr is a wajib and if not prayed qada uh, must be done on on the witr and it's blameworthy it's sinful to leave the witr um it's a three cycle prayer which means that where for the 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 four cycle prayer where we have the four cycle prayer and the two cycle prayer the witr is a three cycle prayer so instead of getting up in the third cycle to do the fourth cycle you would sit down and you do your salam so it's like the maghrib prayer but the only difference between a witr as opposed to a maghrib is in that you do a second surah so you do your surah fatiha and then you do a, another surah and then you do the dua which is uh, dua kunut and this is the dua here and if you don't know the dua you can substitute this with any dua that you do know uh, as long as it's not a dua that you can ask somebody you could ask somebody in real life for such as um uh, oh allah uh, fix my radiator oh allah fix my mobile phone or something like this it's a dua for khair fi dunya wal akhirah and for uh, your health and things like that that only allah can give you so it's a sunnah to recite this dua and if you don't know any dua then just to say ya rab ya rab ya rab three times is sufficient oh lord oh lord oh lord so with the prayer is offered in congregation only in ramadan outside of ramadan it's not done it's uh, prohibitively disliked to offer this prayer in congregation it's done single if somebody joins this prayer in the third third cycle so where in the third cycle we mentioned that the dua kunut is done if it's joined in this that means you've already done the dua so if you would get up to repeat your second and third cycles that you missed you would not do the dua again um it's recommended to delay this prayer uh, uh to the time of the hajjat so where you would get up for your night prayer in the last part of the night before fajr it's recommended and better for you to pray this dua then however if you know that you're someone who can't wake up or there's a chance that you're going to miss this prayer then there's no harm in praying this prayer straight after salatul isha now moving on to the section on the emphasized sunnahs now sunnahs as we mentioned are of two types there are the emphasized sunnahs and non emphasized sunnahs the emphasized sunnahs are sunnahs that rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam did more often than not and rarely missed he rarely missed these sunnahs and he did them more often than not him and his companions uh peace be upon them all and the ghair muaqqida sunnahs are the sunnahs that he did sometimes and left sometimes and if you persistently miss a sunnah muaqqida a emphasized sunnah without an excuse it, it's blameworthy and it becomes sinful because it entails turning away from the sunnah which is not something that we want to do um there there are two hadith i heard the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam say there is no muslim servant of allah who prays 12 supererogatory rakats from other than the obligatory prayer for the sake of allah most high except that allah most high makes for him a house in paradise the, these are one over a number of hadith mentioning the virtues of praying the emphasized sunnahs and the non emphasized sunnahs they have a great virtue and a light in amongst themselves and they protect you as as it's known is that the sunnahs protect your obligatory prayers because they are like a shield around your obligatory prayer shaitan cannot so easily penetrate and stop you play, praying your fard prayers if you're praying your sunnah prayers because the fard prayer is the obligation and the sunnahs are secondary and if you're diligent and vigilant over your sunnahs then how much more will you be over your faraid So it's best to pray the sunnahs straight after your fard. So in the, the Hanafi school, uh, we do not uh, delay between the the fard prayer and the sunnah prayers. So we don't generally return home 
although there's nothing wrong with returning home, but they're best to be prayed, there's an understanding behind it, they're best to be prayed straight after. So any du'as that you need to make, any adhkar that you do, you would do them after your sunnans. So you would pray your fard prayer in congregation, once it's done, you would sit momentarily, stand up and then pray your sunnans. And afterwards you would make the du'a and adhkars. Um, you can offer them in your house, right? And if, if it entails that you're going to come out of the mosque and there's going to be no separation between one act of worship and the other act of worship. So you're not greeting, meeting people in between, walking home slowly and then starting to pray. No, it should be a continuous, continuous act of worship. And if it aids you in your concentration, it's bet if it's better, it's better for you to pray at home if it aids in your concentration. If, however, if you're going to get distracted at home, then and you know that you can pray better in the mosque, then it's better for you to pray this prayer in the mosque. However, we shouldn't make our houses graveyards, uh, and there is a, a barakah that you bring into your house and a light that you bring into your house by praying supererogatory prayers in your house. But generally, there are many other prayers that you would pray in your house anyway. But the sunnans are tied to your prayer. We do not pray them with a gap. We pray them as one prayer, uh, in, in one time frame. So the following are the emphasized sunnahs that are of four cycles. Uh, we have four before Dhuhr, four before Jum'ah, and four after Jum'ah, the Friday prayer. So here is a basic chart on the prayers. And that, that doesn't mean that these are all. There are more that a person can pray add to this. There are more from the sunnah to be added. But this is the, the, the general gist that people generally tend to pray in the Hanafi Madhab. So before Fajr we have two Sunnahs and then we have the two Fard of Fajr. They are the confirmed Sunnahs, they are Sunnah Mu'akkadah, emphasized Sunnahs. Then we, in Dhuhr we have four Sunnahs, four Fard, two Sunnahs, two Nafil. So we have the four emphasized before and then the four, the two after, after the Dhuhr prayer. For Asr we have the four Sunnah and then the four Fard. For Maghrib we have three Fard, two Sunnah, two Nafil and then two Nafil again. The two sunnah are the emphasized ones here. For Isha, we have four sunnah, four fard, two sunnah emphasize, two nafil, three witr, and two nafil again, bringing it up to a total of 17. And for Jum'ah, we have four sunnah emphasize, two fard, which is Salat al Jum'ah, and then four sunnah again, which is emphasized, and then the two sunnah, and then the two nafil. They are to be prayed in one prayer that ends with one set of salams. So, for example, if you pray the Dhuhr, emphasize sunnah and if you broke it into two cycles and two cycles where you prayed the two and on the second sitting you, you gave a salam so it's finished now then you stood up and did the second of the the cycle of four so then now you there'd be two and then two in this state you wouldn't be praying the sunnah you'd be praying just two nuafila and then two nuafila the sunnah is is to pray the four cycles with one set of salams at the end now the sunnahs of Fajr, they're, they're in a special, special category. It's an emphasized sunnah, a very, very strong sunnah. Rasulullah rarely left it and as such it holds some special rulings attached to it. What are they? Before we look at them, uh, two quick hadith. The two sunnah rakas of the morning prayer are better than the world and what it contains. This is in Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ was not more diligent about performing any supererogatory prayer more than the two sunnah rakats of the morning prayer. So the sunnahs of Fajr are the most emphasized of sunnah prayers. You, uh, so much so that you cannot pray them sitting. You have to stand up. With the other ones, you can pray them sitting. With, this, with these uh, sunnahs, you have to pray them standing. And also to the extent that if the group prayer has started, so for example, if I, if I go to the mosque late for Asr prayer, I'm going to give the example of Asr here now. The four sunnahs of Asr that were before the Asr prayer, I didn't pray. When I get to the mosque and the Jama'ah for Asr has started, then I no longer pray my four sunnahs of, of uh, Asr. I pray that I join the Jama'ah because it takes precedence. Regarding the Fajr, the two sunnahs are of such importance that even if the congregation has started, then I have to do those two sunnahs as long as there's no fear that I'm going to miss the congregation. If, however, I join the congregation and I don't pay, pray the two sunnahs, then I do not make them up afterwards. I only have one chance of doing them and that's before. If I've missed, so let's say I overslept and I missed my Fajr Salah altogether, then in this instance, before the middle of the day, before Waqtul Dhuhr, I can 
I have to make up, make up my, my Fajr obviously and then I have to make up the two cycles of Sunnah as well. So I make up my Sunnah, two Sunnah and I make up my two Fajr for Fajr prayer. If however I've gone past the time for Dhuhr then I have lost the chance of making up the Sunnahs of Fajr as well. I can no longer make them up. So the non-emphasized Sunnahs are four. So non-emphasized Sunnahs as we mentioned are Sunnahs that Rasulullah did sometimes and he didn't do them other times. And there's no sin if you leave them but however as a as someone who, who has love for Rasulullah and someone who's, who's there to show, show his Lord that he's there to obey what the Prophet gave us and everything he gave us, it's not a good idea to leave them. And generally you'll find that people who do pray five times a day, they rarely, if ever, leave these sunnahs. There's four before Asr, four before Isha, four units after Isha and six units after Maghrib. Let's have a look at these in more detail. So a hadith, now whoever keeps to performing the four rakas before Dhuhr and four rakas after Dhuhr, Allah will forbid him for the fire. So the two before Dhuhr are the emphasized ones and then the two after Dhuhr. But then there's an additional two as well, right? Nawafila, supurgatory prayers. So if you, the four after, Allah will forbid the fire from you. So there's the huge importance right there of praying those sunnahs. May Allah have mercy on the man who prays four rakas before Asr. Again, it's a non-emphasized sunnah. But here is the evidence for the great reward, blessing, barakah in our lives and the mercy of Allah that descends by praying this sunnans. If the four cycles of sunnan before dhuhr are missed, then they can be prayed after the dhuhr prayer and before the two cycles of sunnah. So if you pray, if you miss the four dhuhr, the emphasized sunnas, and then the congregation starts for some reason, let's say you got there late and then you prayed the, the, the four in congregation, then before you've prayed the two sunnas, you can pray the four sunnas and then the two, then the two sunnas. And also the two sunnas uh, at the end after the Dhuhr prayer can also be joined with the two nuafila as well, making it a cycle of four. The following are general sunnah prayers. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the section on general sunnas. There's a whole list of them. Most of them are in the book and some have been taken from outside the book. And there are many occasions where, where somebody offers additional sunnah nuafila prayers in their life. So the two units of greeting the mosque before sitting down when entering the mosque, it's called it's the greeting of the mosque. In essence, you're actually greeting Allah because when you go to the house of a king, you greet the king. So in this instance, you've gone to the house of Allah and it's the prayer is done for Allah. Now, this is a, a, a sunnah prayer. If you were to enter the mosque with the intention that I'm going to pray the obligatory prayer, then this, this, covers, this will cover that. Or you enter the mosque with the intention that the minute I enter the mosque, I have four sunnahs of Dhuhr to pray, so I'm going to pray the four sunnahs. The understanding is, is that you greet the mosque with some sort of prayer. So if I've prayed my Dhuhr prayer and I'm waiting for Asr prayer and I enter the mosque, then yes, by all means, pray your two sunnahs. Right? It's a greeting of the mosque. But if I have the Dhuhr to do, then I don't need to pray the two sunnah thinking, okay, I'm fulfilling the sunnah and then I'm going to do the, the, the four sunnah of Dhuhr. No. It basically, the sunnah entails praying something when you enter the mosque. So me entering the mosque with the understanding that the dhuhr is about to start. Before it starts, I'm going to pray the four rakas of sunnah for dhuhr. This has fulfilled the sunnah over here as well. Unless uh, you, you pray in the dislike times. What are the dislike times again? When the time for fajr is entered, up till the end of fajr or uh, up till the, the time of uh, ishraq actually. You, that's a dislike time, you cannot pray greeting of the mosque. Also, after the Asr Jama'ah has happened, so if you've prayed Asr in the house or in the mosque, and then you happen to enter the mosque, then you wouldn't pray that, that's a dislike time. Also, if you were to repeatedly enter the mosque, you know that today I'm going to enter the mosque many times, or you just you, you cut across the mosque, there's a shortcut, and the, the easiest way for you is to keep going through the mosque, then in that instance, you'd pray it once in the morning, and that would suffice you for the rest of the day. The two units after performing the wudu before the limbs dry, again, this is a, a noteworthy sunnah, to make wudu and then offer two cycles of prayer with it, preferably before your limbs dry. Four to twelve units of the duha prayer, which is the late morning prayer, that can be prayed any time, from uh, the time Ishraq starts all the way up to uh, Dhuhr time, just before the, uh, uh, the, the sun's at its zenith. Let's have a look at this in a bit more detail. Whoever adheres to the Dhuhr prayer shall have his sins forgiven, even if they are like the foam of the sea. It's a hadith there. So between sunrise and zenith, the sunrise basically means here is about 20 minutes, 25 minutes after the sun has come up. This is the time when the sun is one spare's length. 
uh, the time for Ishraq starts there and it goes up till the zenith which is the highest point of the sun in the sky because after that point Salat al-Dhuhr starts so obviously you'd, you'd wait you know you'd like before a few minutes of that time uh, the, you know, before the wild time the wild time kicks in it's best to pray after a quarter of the day has elapsed so a quarter of the day would be just before mid morning to pray this minimum is two cycles the optimum is four cycles Op- optimal maximum minimum is four cycles and the optimal maximum is eight cycles to pray. It's superior to pray in cycles of four. So you'd pray four and then pray four. And then you f- fulfill the, the optimal maximum and it's superior to pray that way. Generally, any nawafila prayer for any means whatsoever, it's praiseworthy. And it's out of all the forms of worship, prayer is the highest form of worship. And it involves every act of worship that you could possibly give your Lord. So there's recitation of the Quran, there's remembrance. There's thinking, there's du'a, there's movements of your limb, there's, the, there's purifying yourself, purifying your body, there's uh, move, uh, worship in motion, right? So every act of worship is combined into your prayer and then to offer your prayers is anywhere at any time, whenever you remember, whenever you don't remember, if there is a need, if there is a not, not, not a need, there is always a need, right? Uh, to offer, just to offer nawafila, it's praiseworthy, highly rewarded. The prayer of istikhara, when one needs to make a decision. The prayer of istikhara is a prayer for need that a Muslim prays if he's indecisive of any matter in his life, whether it's opening a business, whether it's seeking a spouse, whether it's any decision that you have in your life which you're unsure about, you, th- there's, a, there's a prayer that you pray. You make wudu and then you pray two cycles of, of uh, prayer and then you make this dua. Allah Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Allahumma inni astakhiruka bi ilmika wa astaqdiruka wa qudratika wa sa'aluka min fadlika al-adhim fa innaka taqdiru wa la aqdiru wa ta'lamu wa la a'lamu wa anta 'allamu al-ghayub Allahumma in kuntu ta'lamu anna hadha al-amra khayrun li fi dini wa ma 'ashi wa 'aqibati amri faqdir li yassir li thumma barik li fi wa in kuntu ta'lamu anna hadha al-amra sharrun li fi dini wa ma 'ashi wa 'aqibati amri فاصرفه عني واصرفني عنه واقدر لي يس واقدر للخير حيث كان ثم أرضني به. So this du'a is the du'a of istikhara. The English translation is, Oh Allah, I seek the counsel of your knowledge and I seek the help of your omnipotence and I beseech you for your for your magnificent grace. Surely you are capable and I am not. You know and I know not and you are the knower of the unseen. Oh Allah, if you know that this matter and here you mention your need, is good for me in my religion and in my life and for my welfare in the life to come. Or say in this life and the afterlife, then ordain it for me and make it easy for me, then bless me in it. And if you know that this matter is bad for me in my religion and in my life and for my welfare in the life to come, then then distance it from me and distance me from it and ordain for me what is good, whatever it may be, and help me to be content with it. So, the du'a is for khair in this world and in the, in the akhirah. So you're basically asking Allah for guidance that this matter that I'm going to undertake, if there is good for me in this world and in my hereafter, because we seek good in both realms, then facilitate it for me, open it for me, make it easy for me. And then if, if there is not good for me, then distance me from it and uh, give me something better than it. It's a beautiful du'a. And it's not just used for marriages. Some people are under the impression that it's only used for marriages. And also, people have this understanding that you're going to have a dream, right? You're, you're supposed to see colors or you're going to have a dream and your dream is going to give you some kind of indication and some signs. Well, how do we know if this... is if, if this? We have three types of dreams. Uh, we have uh, uh, Malakuti, Shaitani and Nafsiyati. It could be a rightly guided dream. It could be a dream from the Shaitan. Or it could be the whisperings of your own soul. So we don't go by dreams, right? We don't go by dreams. It's basically a du'a for guidance. It's an opening, asking Allah for an opening. And whatever you feel is the best decision for you, then you undertake this decision. And you consult, right? So the sunnah is to pray the istikhara and consult with people, people who know better than you, and then make your mind up and then do what you have to do. And Allah will give you blessing in what what you have to do. So also the, the prayer of need. Now, Salatul Hajat, a beautiful du'a that's made in times of need. If you have a sincere need, then you make this prayer and then you ask Allah with the following supplication. 
لا إله إلا الله الحليم الكريم سبحان الله رب العرش الأديم الحمد لله رب العالمين أسألك موجبات رحمتك وأزائم مغفرتك والغنيمة من كل بر والسلامة من كل إثم لا تدع لي ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا حاجة إلى فرجته إلى إلا فرجته فرجته ولا حاجة هي لك رضا إلى إلى قديتها يا أرحم الراحمين So this is the Salatul Hajat in English. There is no God but Allah, the forbearing, the most generous. Glory be to Allah, Lord of the magnificent throne. Praise be to Allah, Lord of the worlds. I ask you for that which evokes your mercy, for deeds which bring about your forgiveness, for the benefit of complete piety and for safety from all error. Do not leave me with any sin unforgiven, nor worry unrelieved, nor any need that is pleasing to you without fulfilling it. O merciful of those who show mercy. So once you make this dua and then you express your own sincere wish also. Many a dua has been ex- accepted just from your own words. You can pray the two cycles. This dua is from the sunnah and you can express your own dua. Even if you weren't to make this dua, if you didn't know it, you could express with your own words. And you can make this dua and express with your own words. And inshallah, Allah will fulfill your needs. The night prayer before the two days of Eid. So the night before the Eid, once the new moon has been sighted and it's Eid the following day, to offer uh, nawafila. The night prayer during the last 10 nights of Ramadan, which is known, the night prayer on the 10th of Dhul Hijjah, and the night prayer on the 15th of Sha'ban. Tahajjud prayer. Tahajjud is one of the secrets of the mu'min that most of the ummah are in neglect of and those who know reap the benefits and those who don't know are in need to know so it's one of those um, sunnahs that was it was obligatory for Rasulullah to do but for the ummah it's a huge praiseworthy act after your fard prayers and your wajib prayers no other prayer is more important in virtue than this prayer to pray after salatul isha up till the, uh, the break of dawn after sleeping and having awoken and to delay that prayer to the last third of the night. If not able to get up, then even 40 winks, which is like, you know, you shut up for five minutes and then to get up and then to make wudu and pray it is enough. Or if you can't do it, then at least pray something, some nawafila before you retire to bed after the Isha prayer. But ideally, it's best to get up for this prayer. And one easy way of getting up for this prayer is to get up 15, 20, 15 minutes or 10 minutes before Fajr and then make your wudu and then pray and then to ask Allah for your need. And then the Adhan for Fajr goes and then to pray your Fajr if you're very far away from a mosque or then go to the mosque and pray your Fajr prayer. And if you can't even do that, at the very least, to wake up in the middle of the night even momentarily and say oh Allah here I am oh Allah here I am I love you I'm weak I can't pray but I'm here to tell you I woke up to tell you I love you oh Allah forgive me oh Allah give me and bless me and forgive my sins even doing that uh, waking up at the in the middle of the night is of great great uh, value because Allah descends to the lowest heavens in the last part of the night and asks his servants ask of me that I shall give so the minimum is two rakas and the optimum is eight rakas the the sunnah is to do long recitations and like surah Baqarah and and other long surahs and it's a very blessed time when your duas are answered so if you're unable to do the long surahs or if you don't know them then any surah will suffice and then to make a heartfelt dua is sufficient Prayer of repentance, if you've made a sin and you want to repent, it's a good idea to make ablution perfectly, to offer two cycles of nawafila and then ask for repentance. Ask Allah to forgive you and inshallah Allah will forgive you and then turn away from the sin. Prayer for thanks and gratitude, prayer when distress or in need. Before traveling, so before traveling to pray in the house and then when coming back from travel to pray in the masjid. So that's it for today. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.